I was I was working in Wichita, and uh, we were the only independent model shop in the Midwest. And the aircraft business at that time in 1970 had got pretty soft, and so everybody just took off and went on vacations or whatever for a while. And I had an interview with Bill Pinkerton at the Holiday Inn in Wichita. He invited me to come down here. And so I came down and thought, you know, this is kind of neat. You know, aerodynamics and fluid dynamics is, is very much the, the same type of flow. It's just it's accelerated different ways. So, so by understanding that particular technology has really helped me over the years be able to understand what I need to do in order to correct different problems. Yeah. Now this one doesn't walk as good as doesn't walk as good as that one. You know, it it goes through phases. So you have the design phase. You know, <clears throat> when you first start out, uh, if you're working with someone, well then, you know, what you have to do is, is you, have to, you have to figure out what is that concept that they have in their head. And so you have to, you have to go and, and, and uh, a lot of what I like to do is maybe I'll make two completely different concepts on the computer. And then I'll bring the guy in and I'll say, okay, what do you think about this? Uh, you know, the design part is probably the fastest part to do. It's after, it's after that that everything starts to slow down. Because now you have, to, you have to build some kind of either tooling or <laughs> rely on a printed part that you can go and you can fish do your evaluation of, okay, is this, do we have the wiggle we want? You know, do we have the depth we want? What do the fish, you know, is, is, it, is it running through uh, cover the way we want it? Is it deflecting right? Is it, you know, there's all different things that you, that you need to find out. And then if it's not, well then you have to figure out, okay, what do I need to do in order to change this bait so I can still make this guy happy, but I can make Mother Nature happy too? I've got another bait up here that that I've that I did that was was kind of unique. It was something that I've not ever seen in a in a bait. Is this is our Arbogast buzz plug? And I made the, the blade and I put the, the, the brand in the blade. And I don't know that anyone has ever done that. Now that was, I don't know, something when you wake up at two o'clock in the morning and, and you know, you're working on a, on a project and, and it, you know, all of a sudden you just wake up with this idea, you know. And, and uh, so I did that and it turned out really neat because we wanted this this bait to put on a, a real good bubble trail behind it, and that was just a perfect uh, little feature to put in that blade in order to get this to happen. Used to what what uh, how how the, the the product would would the design would be is uh, Mr. Perrin would make a like a four to one model of of the body of what he wanted and then that would be traced on a hand tracer out in the tool room now what we do is we do the design in the computer like we were doing but now we can take it to a 3d printer and we th print the two body halves that we have all of these features in it and then we get finished printing it we put the hardware in it we glue the two halves together and we can go back and we can test it in the tank if we like it 
we can paint it, and we can go fish it. There's one. Oh, that's a big one, too. Did, did the perfect 10. I got with, uh, got with Jason Christie and made him over, met him over at Ten Killer and to see just exactly, because we had the Rogue, and what he was doing is he was customizing the Rogue. So I went over and, and met with him to see, number one, how he was fishing it, uh, what was different from what we were actually producing, uh, wanted to see what special features he might want in this new bait. And uh, I was fairly surprised. He didn't really ask for a whole lot. He wanted a certain paddle, which we made a little tweak to what he was actually doing. And I probably made 20 different paddles, and I made it so that he could slide the paddles in, he could fish them, he could slide that one out, put another one in the same body, he could fish it, until we finally got to the, the paddle that he wanted. And that's the thing that, that really makes it neat is, is to be able to get out with these guys and see exactly what they want and be able to ask them, you know, different questions of, hey, what's, what would you like this or would you like to have that? That makes those projects pretty special. Then I think he finished about sixth, I think, in the Bassmaster Classic. He was leading it, I think, the first two days. Uh, so to be able to see the product out to where you, you've made something, the pro fisherman is happy with it, and, and you'd be successful with it and everything, that's, you know, that, that, that makes it pretty sweet at that time, you know. If you look through old catalogs, you look at stuff that's, you know, you look and say, well, man, that kind of looks like this bait right here. It's it's just kind of a continuation of of something that someone has done years and years ago, but it's kind of brought back with some new technology. It's brought back with you know new decorating schemes, uh, and and you know that's the that's the thing that ends up being you know eye catchers. Fish get tired of seeing the same old thing all the time, but there's reasons why they strike particular things. So what you have to do is you have to find different ways to present that look to them that wants to entice them to strike that they don't say, ah, oh, I was fooled on that the other day, I'm not hitting that. But you do something very similar to that and you know they're not the smartest creature in the world <clears throat> and then it gives gives them something that yeah okay i'm gonna hit that i hadn't i hadn't seen that or i haven't heard that sound before and that's one thing that that i think is 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 one thing that that i have done to several baits over the years is yeah, they may look very much the same, but I've tried to figure out, okay, if I can keep a somewhat resemblance to that bait a certain way, but how can I present it to where the fish are going to strike it, you know, better? And, and, and so, you know, sound is, is, is one way that, you know, by, by changing things to where, where you can come out with a, a, a sound that's that's something that they're not hearing you know it's it's a little bit unique from what they're used to hearing you know and the series of baits that I'm I'm designing for for one of our brands right now uh, we've got a patent on on that and that series of baits from what the pros that have fished it, or pros that have fished it, have said these baits are going to be very, very special.